Welcome to the Scale Model Podcast. In this podcast, we aim to entertain, inform, and promote the hobby of scale model kit building with interviews, reviews, and news about the hobby. The podcast is available bi-weekly where your favorite podcasts are found, including iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also get it from our website at scalemodelpodcast.com, where you can find show notes, photo gallery, and so much more. You can also subscribe to get notifications on all our updates, new episodes, and video content. Please support the Scale Model Podcast on Patreon. Patreon supporters enjoy early access to content and exclusive contests. Your Patreon support helps us to offset hosting and other costs to bring the podcast to you. Welcome to episode 115 of the Scale Model Podcast, sponsored by Cult TV Man, Sean's Custom Model Schools, and Return to Kit Form. I'm your host, Stuart Clark, and I'm here once again with a couple of interesting characters. First of all, from uh, southwest of me, from the north shore of Lake Erie, where he is physically tearing down, moving cabins, trying to keep the lake at bay. Mr. Jeff Highland, how are you, sir? I am exhausted, and almost all parts of my body hurt. Well, that's because you're old. Well, that, you know what? You know what? I didn't really realize that. I mean, I mean, all of us, I think, internally, you have a certain sense of how old you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't think I was as old as I am. And my body reminded me this weekend um, uh, yeah. after I was turning down these cabins that I'm definitely old. <laughs> and I also want to remind you, you do have three son-in-laws. Who, yeah, who, they weren't who here this gave, weekend. Who you gave blessings to marry your daughters, so they owe you. <laughs> yes, but they were, they were here last weekend, and they did yeoman service. Uh, all right basically burning everything they could get their hands on. <laughs> an outdoor bonfire. Oh so. dear. Okay. Oh, that explains that, that thermal plume from, from the weather satellite picked up. That was what, that was why we had such beautiful weather for the last few days. Oh, I see. You kept it at bay. That must, must've yeah. been it. Okay. And then, uh, West Northwest of Chicago land. Is it Northwest here? Or is it it's south? mostly due west. Mostly due west of Chicago land. Your friend and mine, all things sci-fi and our most fabulous guest booker, as you'll hear later on, Mr. Terry Measley. Good evening, gentlemen. As, yes, yeah, so yeah, as we say, we have a little sneak. We have a little long sneak. pause. What's wrong yes. with Terry? What's wrong with Terry? Yet again, no, no, he's sounding good. He did good. We just finished an interview. We'll talk about that in a yep. few minutes. And uh, we, it was really good. He always finds us the good guests. You notice that? I did notice that. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 amazing. He, you know what? He 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 he, he could a, probably he could probably dig up Elvis or it's or, a big or hobby Kennedy. Hobby. I may be an impersonator. Well, you know, whatever. I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure it would be good. All right. So first of all, we want to thank our latest Patreon supporter, Rob V. Thank you for your contribution uh, to keep things going with the podcast. Like everything else in life, hosting costs, everything else goes up. So we really appreciate your support to keep the podcast going. If you want to be a part of the Scale Model Podcast Patreon team, just go to patreon.com forward slash scale model podcast and any contribution you can give is always helpful all right uh we're just gonna go i don't really have much much for latest news i know there was a lot of shows on this weekend roscoe turner had their show and uh a few other ones but show seasons definitely uh started particularly in the states um yep check those calendars over at ipms and um did you make it anything this weekend terry um, no, I was in Cincinnati nope. for a different meeting. Oh, that's right. Okay. So yes, down in, down in Cincinnati, home of WKRP and where Terry yep. grew up. Pretty yep. well. Okay. Meeting. Go ahead. Oh, I said the meeting is back at the, um, Hilton's, the former, um, Omni Netherlands, a, there an amazing, go. um, art deco hotel. If you ever get Neat. down there, definitely Neat. stop in. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Let's talk about a few latest hobby announcements. A couple from the industry. Track Jam Models, uh, they announced on their Facebook page, they're in negotiations with Mad Malibu to carry their the Canadian G-Wagon kit in resin. So this is the standard Canadian, you know, our version of the Humvee, basically. Um, this is going to be in resin. It's going to cost around 140 Canadian, but that's not an unreasonable price for a full-on kit in 135th scale. Uh, they're looking for people to gauge interest in the product. So we do have the link on the show notes. And they're hoping to have a, a demo or an actual display model at Tor- the Torcan show in Toronto in May. 
So you 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 Canadian uh, armor modelers might be something to check out. So uh, yeah, that looks nice. Looks like there's some optional, you know, gun turrets and all that good stuff, and even a resin Canadian flag. See, that's worth it, right there. There you go. What more yeah. do you need, right? Okay. And a spare can of gas. And a spare can. You need that, especially in Canada, right? Okay, oh, yeah. our good friends at Katero. Um, have the latest version of their Spitfire Mark I. This is the Brian Lane edition. Uh, this is going to be a pre-order from the 14th of April. Uh, shipping in late May, early June. Uh, they do require a pre-order deposit payment. Uh, so this includes the kit, obviously, and Terry has a copy of this. We managed to yes. get, get, we managed to, you know, put our paws all over it at Heritage so, Con. My goodness, it is, it's, it's a stunning kit. And, Look, guys, the pre-order is one hundred and nine dollars. It's honestly a steal at one hundred and nine dollars. Yeah. yeah. Um, kit links will have it listed at one hundred and sixty-five. So, now, granted, yeah. there's there's a shipping, but the uh, from what yeah. I saw, the shipping was was minimal, and those resin exhaust shrouds make, make it up all for that. Well. Plus, you get a yeah. four-part resin RAF pilot figure sculpted by Mike Good. Available exclusively with this one. Uh, this is again thirty second scale, so it'll match the uh, kit. Yeah, so don't hesitate on this. Yep. I mean, this is if you have any interest in the subject. Yeah, you'll want this. Brian's yeah. uh, nineteen squadron uh, will, will will be that one. So definitely, uh, definitely check that out. I think it'll be the first of several subjects we're going to see from there. And looking from- at that, uh, looking at that box art, the uh, oh yeah, boy. Boy, is that uh, calling back to the Wingnut Wings series when they did yep. uh, figures with the with, with some of the reissues? Oh yeah, it's, exactly. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it's yep. fantastic. And again, their no, site, I, it, Kateri, just beautiful site. You can see a full uh, screenshots of the instructions. Uh, shades of Wingnut Wings, and just yeah, like I said, we managed to look at it. Terry was nice enough to bring his uh, Mark One down for Heritage Con, and just. Absolutely gorgeous. I keep thinking to myself, I, if I could find a way to justify it, if I can ever get some display space, then I can justify it. Well, well I guess I, display sorry, space, yeah, it's it's not a big plane. So, no, no, it's not. But again, you know, just no. absolutely gorgeous with the color callouts and everything. So I think I think I just have to sell all the rest of my Spitfire kits and then buy this one. Just build this one. I could pretty well yeah. do that. I think I have. I'm trying to think how many I have in this. I think about nine in the stash right now. That's Most almost ten percent of your stash. I know, I know. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were talking about that because our swap meets coming up, and you were evil and said, "How many do you have?" And I was actually stupid enough to count them. Oh yeah, so, but you know, I, I'm getting rid of one one to you. I'm just saying. Yeah, it was very very kind of you to give yeah. up your Pilgrim Observer space Pilgrim uh, Observer space, space station. I well, I always said if I decided not to, you were going to get first refusal. So yeah. I do I do expect it built up though. That's a fun one. I'm going to have to play around with that. I think you'll have sure. fun. Okay. Speaking of some other big kits, HK, uh, no surprise here. They did release an A20G uh, in the uh, Asian theater. This is the A20 Havoc in 132nd scale. They're now doing a European edition. Um, so expected in May. Um, gorgeous looking again. Uh, good as a twin engine. It was a medium bomber. Uh, I also remember building the Matchbox one when I was a kid. But this is uh, this is nice. It's got the stress skin, um, just a gorgeous looking kit. Definitely good examples of new technology. Now, what's interesting about this kit? It does come with three decal schemes, but what's interesting is it's actually the same aircraft over different periods. 20th of June, mm-hmm. 44, 5th of October, oh, <laughs> 44, and 4th of November. I don't know if they're being cheap, but again, you don't see that often, but it's interesting. That that is in, yeah that is interesting yeah it's, mm-hmm. uh, huh. yeah I don't know why what you know they did that specifically or but yeah well yeah obviously yeah they basically they increase the number of uh, bombing raids on the nose and stuff like that so yeah yeah that's yeah. fascinating but um, you know what I'm sure we're gonna see so this aircraft was the first to complete a hundred missions without a failure or an abort mission Douglas um, made some good planes. Yep, yep, they did. So this will be, uh, they later renamed it uh, La France Libre to 
participate in a ceremony in Paris uh, with the uh, with the uh, celebrating the hundred missions. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be other decal schemes. Our friends at uh, the Modeling News has some great pictures of the schemes and some of the pictures, like when she yeah, landed they, on her hundredth mission. Are there any uh, actual? physical differences in the kits any additional stuff for the european I'm ones not i don't sure. think so i'm not a havoc expert but i don't think there was i don't think so no that's why i said no one was really surprised when they announced when they announced that's the asian one that there would be another set. yeah yeah and i'm sure you'll see some i'm sure you'll see some other ones so another I popular know. I, I choice think, I, I think it would be very uh difficult to choose la france libre uh, that scheme over the mislaid scheme. Mislaid uh, scheme. Yeah, I know. I know. Seems quite appealing. Yes. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. Okay. All right. Before Jeff gets into more trouble, let's move on. Uh, Trumpeters, two new kits for May. Uh, this, these ones always fascinate. The DKM. Uh, so basically the German Navy H class battleship, 1350th. This was a what if. A paper battleship, but this was a series. And again, it's fascinating when you read the history. This is before they realized how important the carrier was going to be. So just, you know, in the late 30s, early 40s. So the H class was a series of battleship designs for the Kriegsmarine, um, which they had a plan called Plan Z, and it was like a 15 year plan. So basically, uh, the first variation, H39, was an enlarged Bismarck with 16 inch guns. Um, this one here, the H, the H41, uh, had larger main guns. And then the even bigger one had even like huge. Like this is, yeah. So 40, 16.5 inch weapons. So they were planning to do a whole bunch of these. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, none of the only the first two, of the H-39s were laid down. Everything else never got past the drawing board. Uh, but this is going to be a nice kit if you like the German battleships. Um, again, basically a very big up gun Bismarck. Uh, we have a total of over 1,100 parts, uh, almost 80 centimeters in length, 20 sprues, including a stand, uh, some gorgeous stuff, deck wood platter and finely rendered. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of photo etch, some chain, you know, lots of photo etch to drive you nuts. Um, you know, we'll see if how popular is if someone does like like wood decking and the aftermarket crowd picks up on this. I love the uh, the box art with the Luft 46 jets flying overhead. Yep, yep exactly. Yeah, <laughs> these were, again, if you do some research, it was quite fascinating what they had for ideas for plans, both this and the aircraft carriers and... <laughs> you know, whatnot. So, yeah, I always like this kind of what if. What if the carriers weren't as big? Um, what if battleship production, you know, concluded? And the Japanese did the same yeah. thing. And what if, what if battleships with weren't the essentially rendered useless? Yeah. 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 In the Montana class and all that. It's an interesting, it's an interesting part of, part of naval history. Okay. Next we have a L4500A MIT 2 centimeter flak 38 and 135th scale. This is a German uh, World War II semi-armored version of a Mercedes-Benz truck with a 2 centimeter flak gun on it, uh, designed for air, air, air defense. So a quad mount. Um, yeah, each of the each of the guns 220 RPM. That's throwing up a lot of lead. Mm -hmm. It's saying so. You got some standard decal sheets. Uh, you can deploy the gun and its mounting slide can be detached and deployed elsewhere, such as for fixed gun deployment. So again, 420 parts, uh, some photo etch. So if you're a, a student of this time, including a full drivetrain and hollow. There rubber. you go. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So those will be in sale through Trumpeters Distributors in May. All right. I'm I'm still in this 132nd kick. Uh, Infinity models. This has been well awaited. This is their 32nd scale with Japanese VAL, the D3A1. We've talked about this before, but yeah, you actually have sprue shots now. That's they look nice. Yeah, this, this is one I am interested in. Yeah, I know you we'll would see. Be. 337 <laughs> parts. If the plane has spats, then Terry's interested in it. Yeah, exactly. essentially any more if it's got floats or spats. I'm interested, yeah. 18 <laughs> clear parts, so you can display it either canopy closed or open. They give you all the options there or for the greenhouse. 55 photo etch parts. Looks like steel photo etch there, Terry, doesn't it? 
It's like a silver um, photo etch. It it does. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got two color schemes, both used in the curl in the Pearl Harbor raid. I almost like the second one, what they did there with the red tail and the yellow stripes. Right. Mm-hmm. From the Sor- ones from the Kaga and the other ones from the Soryu. Very nice. nice. Yeah, I yeah. The, they're those Infinity Model thirty second scale kits mm-hmm. are nice kits. Gorgeous. You're gonna be able to get it uh from the Art Scale EU website for just under ninety seven euros. Um so yeah, and it's thirty one centimeters long by about forty five in wingspan. So a fair Not size. Small. Not small. Okay, moving on. A little bit of F1 news. Uh, Mung's really getting into Formula One. Used to be uh, Tamiya's area. So this is actually also a Tallery is too, but this is a new toolkit from Mung of the 88, 1988 F1 championship from McLaren. So this is the MP4-4 four and 112 scale. Uh, this looks gorgeous. Again, it if... does. At least the CAD designs yeah. look phenomenal now it'll be interesting to see just like the swastikas this had you know their primary sponsor was a was a cigarette sponsor yeah and i notice on the box art you don't see the cigarette sponsor listed anywhere there so it'll be interesting just interesting to see what they do oh that is interesting In, I know, all, what yeah. no they don't you're right Isn't yeah that interesting? i know our friends on the bench were talking about this on the weekend and uh there was some speculation about okay, are they going to like split split the decal like they do with swa- swastikas or? You know. No, I I doubt it. I my guess is they don't want to pay licensing fee yep. to Marlboro. So I wonder if there's going to be. So you just aren't going to get that scheme. Yep. And I wonder yeah. if in some areas you're not you know they can't do cigarette advertising anymore. Yeah. You know That's that possible. could be it too. You know so maybe. The, uh, yeah, because you see on the on the box art on 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 the tail, it's just got McLaren where it would have Marble there before. So on the very last picture of the article. Um, so yeah, that looks like a nice looking kit due for release in July. It'll be interesting to see what else, what else Mung does. Yeah. Uh, that, includes, whole, uh, yeah. that whole drivetrain engine assemblies are really nice. slick looking. Yeah. That big yeah. Honda engine. Yeah. Wow. That looks very Dual nice. turbos. Yeah. yeah. Zero to stupid and no time flat. The brakes look good too. I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you'll get some aftermarket. I'm sure. Oh yeah, we've seen some of these mm-hmm. companies and the the stuff they offer is aftermarket. I forget the one that does for these things is super impressive. You, it, yeah. it's at least as much as the kit. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. Okay, moving on to our good friends at Special Hobbies because they do regular updates on their website, not just social media. So I like giving them some shout outs. So this is the April issue. Um, including uh, the little note, n- note, n- note from the president. Um, our range of resin and 3D sets get a welcome addition with the form of a couple of sets for PT boat sets and then some new drones and that. So let's just have a, have a quick peek. Oh, look, there's a KI-43 in 172nd scale for, uh, with Japan's allies. Schemes mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Royal Thai Air Force. Uh, Manchuria Air Force. And then up, next up is the in 48th scale. This is kind of cool. The AF-2 Guardian Fire Bomber in 148th. That's this a fun was one. The largest yeah. single-engine piston aircraft ever to have been flown from a deck of a of an aircraft carrier. Yeah, so I've got one a, of the one of the kits, one of the yeah? standard naval guardian kits. And okay. my buddy Neil bought the other one. So one of us has the radar version, one of them has right. it. So this was hunter, originally used killer. for anti anti sub work originally. Yeah, hunter killer teams. Right. Okay. So but this is in a uh and they would they were kept flying until well into the seventies. This was used for firefighting. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Next up is the one seventy second C thirty seven C, the Deuce, US Marine Corps. I don't remember ever seeing this, but it looks cool. It's different. Yeah, it was used in the Vietnam. They operated it in the Vietnam. At one point when it was introduced, it was the largest helicopter in the world. Yeah, it was a beast. I'm trying to remember if this is a repop. This is a re-release, it says. Okay. And it has an extra sprue with new and correct shaped external fuel tanks with pylons. And there is three decal schemes for Marine Corps machines. Oh, cool. It's a, it's a great subject. Yeah, they say here the original kit's been out of production for a long wow. time. It's price as prices on auction skyrocketed as now as and that means now they'll be dropping. All right. Yeah. I, know, I know a few Mirage fans, the Mirage 3, mm. 3C. 
Nice this plane. is the first jet produced in Western Europe to break Mach 2 in level flight. Very nice. Yep. I like it. I just don't know enough about it to try and I don't want to insult the fans who know this thing, but it looks like it's very good. I've heard, I've heard people talking about it. They're very pleased with it. Great. But it looks like a classic paper airplane shape. Very it does. Good. It's, it's a mirage. It's a dart. All right. Mm-hmm. Back, back in stock, the Steyr 1500 Kraken Wagon. Kraken Wagon. Kraken. I like crack. I like Kraken wagon better. I like cranking. It's like all it right. picks up cranks and takes yeah. them away. Yeah, yeah. All right. We got a. We got a need for that. Hope they're building more. Crank. This is in the uh, wood cab, one seventy second scale. So it was also an ambulance. So yeah, it looks like that's a reissue, and then a lot of mass. So obviously mass for the AF two Guardian. Yep. Uh, for the helicopter resin kits. Yeah, they've been doing a lot. For, they've been doing a lot for. For, uh, for PT boats. You know what? That got me thinking. You know how I said the Musaru Cup? I won't be surprised if, if we have to do a ship. Wouldn't it be neat if we could do a 70-second PT boat? Yeah. yeah. I built one when I was a kid. I, I don't think I'll get that lucky. But So this is the 30, this is the set number five. This is the 37-millimeter M4 autocannon. So that was kind of yep, cool. Yep, that's cool. And like they say on there, that was the same gun as in the um, P-39s. That's right. Yes. So the, this is a resin, much better detailed than that of the original kit, Styrene. Awesome. Okay, then we have a modern Iranian drone. This is uh-huh. the Iran made. I, I, I and and again, you 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 know we're special hobbies on their side of the uh, of 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 the conflict. Drone is used yeah. by the Russian military to terrorize Ukraine and to attach its civil in- infrastructure. This is resin cast, comes with the through three D printed parts, and is available in the Planet model. Range comes with a sheet of decals. Again, sci-fi it up. It's kind of cool, though. Little pusher thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got some resin wheels for the 48B25 and various manufacturers. Uh, F4 Wildcat open gun bays for the 72nd kit for the Arma, for the Arma Hobby kit. Uh, also the Wildcraft dinghy set for the Arma Hobby kit. Huh. So you can open that up. Uh, they also mention here the weapon set number three, the 37 millimeter gun for the Ravel kits. Uh, what else here? Tow bar for a MiG 1517 and 148. That's pretty nice. So that's pretty cool too. So yeah, direct 3D print. So yeah, more goodies from our good friends at Special Hobbies. Okay, let's go to what's new at Scalemates, or how do we separate us from our our wallets yet again? New tool, Albatross Liftcraft D3. Ofa Jag. <laughs> Albatross. 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 Uh, Salty petrol on a stick. Now, the other one I know is some people, the classic British Bulldog, the Mark II. RS is going to come out with it in 148. Oh. There hasn't been a decent Bulldog model, I understand, in quite a while. No. I know there was some chatter there. Yeah, from RS. Nice. I like this Bandai Volpanova quad bike version. How's that? Bexum 33 QB. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's from the Bandai Spirit Spirits, line yeah. too. Yeah, because you bought that's a quad cool. bike at the show, Terry, didn't you? Oh uh, no, no, it was oh, a, no, what, or like it was a, quad a, it was a three-wheeler or two-wheeler, three-wheeler, yeah, from... two-wheeler. Okay, I just remember it was very sci-fi-ish and yeah, this yeah. this is a very different thing here. Yeah, so that's from April seventeenth. Oh, it's from the thirty-minute mission series. Is okay. okay great. You know what that is now? Uh yeah, they're yeah, they're they're quick things. Okay. Uh on the sixteenth, AMT uh is NASA Artemis One Rocket. One to two hundred SLS block one. All right. There you go, Jeff. Just saying. Yeah, I don't think I'm not interested. I also saw yeah. a post somebody posted saying that um uh round two or polar lights or somebody is coming out with one in the fall. So see huh. they know that they're obviously listening to you. They listen to the well, podcast. And no one Makes and here sense. it makes sense on the 16th as well kotobukiya has released the kotobukiya, kotobukiya. building i know and that, <laughs> that great one three under scale yep That's only in japan i love it has I the love shop it. and everything yeah why the heck not <laughs> i love it all right uh also on the 16th is wolf 3d resin in 32nd 48th and 72nd a pc7 turbo trainer that's Some obvious parts both 3d resin parts yeah resin parts it looks like it's the entire thing looks like uh obviously something the australian air austrian air force uses for for training hmm. nice looking scheme 
Uh, oh. April 15th, AMT, the 1970 Buick Wildcat. That's a new tool. And the Fabia RS Rally 2. Only the kits without the decals. You can add your own decals, 143rd. Um, and then April 14th, I think we mentioned these already. Or no, I know what it was. I mentioned it on the last ad from our friends at Cult TV. The Monarch, mm. the Moon Suit, 1 8th. Yeah. 1961. And the Stycanosaurus and a Caveman. Styracosaurus. Whatever. Whatever. I think it's tomato, tomato. Tomato, yeah. tomato. Well, it's, it, you know, it's obviously a temporal distortion combining. Yeah. 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 Who, who went back or who went forward through the time yep. machine? Whoever, whoever, the caveman's not looking impressed. Either that no. is going, that's a lot of barbecue. <laughs> one of the uh, two. Okay. Yeah, the other one's doing the same. Yeah. Uh, is this, what's up? L thir- from the 13th, L13B. Bakelstrock? And the Praga ah, cool. XE55 from MH Models. Looks like some sort of experimental plane. Well, one's yeah. a powered glider, and then the, the Praga looks... Yeah, I'm not like... entirely sure. Yeah, 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 some sort of... I know, it says glider. Isn't a powered glider kind of a contradiction in terms? <laughs> Isn't it like like decaf coffee or meatless bacon? I don't get that, but I, I do. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Uh, what else? 12, a lot of Cessna 172s, VFR models. Mid production, late production, early production. Yeah. Yeah. And then just down to the 11th. Oh, yes. Fine molds. They're coming out with a new F 15J, the hot scramble 1984 scheme, the early scheme. A Also a UN, UN destroyer. I assume that means Japanese. IJ, IJN. IJN. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Akabono. Akabono and 1350. It looks like a nice Where looking kit. Where's that from? I assume the Second World War. Looks very Second World Warish. Looks later than that, but yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, and then B Max models. We got a bit for one tonight. Is. Suzuki RGV 500, 1993 World Champion bike. Team team, team Suzuki again. Zero to a smear on the wall if you don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But that does look nice. I yep. know the guys who do these bike kits, what some of the stuff they do is just... Yeah, it is. It's pretty impressive. Absolutely. It's, oh. it's brilliant, yeah. Okay, I lied, Jeff. One more. April 10th, mm-hmm. the Koari Co- X, the Republic right. of South Korea Air Force, their unmanned jet fighter. That is pretty cool. One one forty fourth though. The thing's got to be tiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they've also got their four point, the KF-21, which is the 4.5 generation single seat. So yeah. it's like it's it's like you take a F twenty two and you do a few things to it, or actually yeah. actually you take an F twenty two and an F thirty five. This is and this is what happens when they mate. And they you see. take a KF twenty one and you stick a Kaori X on top of it and like a like a drone on an SR seventy one and off you go. There you <laughs> go. It's like a missile. Exactly. Exactly. All right. That's what's new kits. Anything else anyone's noted or seen or uh, the. The, on April seventh, the uh, Halberd models thirty second scale Seahawk popped up. I don't, I don't think we talked about that last time. Uh, I know we talked but about. Keep Seahawks. checking with them to yeah. see if stuff's we'll available. What's going on, and we'll never know what we'll find. So yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So that's all the news that's fit to print. So let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, and then we'll come back for a few moments and do the intro to our interview. So first, a word from our good friends at Colt TV, man. Let's see what's new from our good friends at Cult TV Man and ColtTVManShop.com. Lots of exciting news. Some new box art images Steve's released. Some of these we've talked about a little bit before, but it's nice to see the box art. Uh, from X Plus, we have the Glow, Glow Cyclops from the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Uh, a couple new box art images. Looks really good. We also have the box art for the Jurassic Park T Rex. This is the one with the T-Rex and Malcolm in 135th scale. Gee, 135th, you could see some diorama opportunities there. Comes with the T-Rex, Malcolm with a flare, some of the electrical fence, etc. looks really nice. Then we have the Revenge of the Creature, 18th scale from X Plus as well. Maybe later in the summer, uh, they're pointing out here. But we also got some new products in and new stuff available for pre-order. We have the Shin Ultraman, 
one to two fiftieth from X Plus for seventy nine ninety nine. Aurora Glow Parts from the Monster and Vampire from Atlantis uh, seventeen ninety nine. Uh, for those of you who like Back to the Future, a clear flux capacitor and decals for the DeLorean one twenty fifth scale from Back to the Future. That's uh, eleven ninety nine from Lake Monster. Also from Lake Monster for the USS Oberth, the Warp Chiller Girls for the one three fiftieth version. And then a reissue, the Lighthouse with Light and Diorama Base, reissue from Atlantis. So all sorts of goodies uh, coming out there, as well as all the normal stuff. Make sure you check them out at culttvman.com and culttvmanhobbyshop.com. We should point out they are going to be at Wonderfest, one of our favorite shows. That's June 10th and 11th at the Crown Plaza in Louisville, and they're going to have lots of goodies there. So make sure you check them out. And as always, when you're ordering, tell them the Scale Model Podcast sent you. And we're back, and I am totally pumped for this interview. Uh, Terry, our wonderful interview gatherer, gatherer of, of tough interview subjects. You guys are <laughs> going to love this. Terry, go ahead. I leave it all to you. So. Well, I mean, I'm going to introduce in just a moment here. So I let's know, just jump just, right into we'll it. Jump right in surprise people. Here we go. All right. And we are really, really pleased to have an absolutely special guest. Uh, thanks to our good show booking guru, Mr. Terry Measley. Terry, I'm just going to let you, you, you take it away so I avoid fanboying. Great. Um, our guest tonight is Rick Sternbach, uh, noted designer and uh, Wonderfest regular. Um, after working with PBS and Disney, uh, Rick worked on the Star Trek projects, starting with the motion picture. Mm -hmm. So pretty much there since uh, the beginning in the 80s here. Uh, other notable projects include working on NASA's Voyager movie, um, Last Starfighter and Solaris, and that's all prior to working on The Next Generation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rick Sternbach. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, like, like we say, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure. And, uh, to have, you know, and again, I'm sure you get this all the time to have an absolute legend of the industry with us tonight. So, uh, this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let Terry lead, lead, lead away. And Jeff and I will just occasionally interject if we have a question. Please do. Yeah. So, um, I think I'm going to skip ahead here and ask about uh, Next Gen. Um, we saw Next Gen made a lot of really big changes to uh, ship design and, and canon and and uh, and concepts as well. Uh, a few of those were yours. Do you have any really favorite children out of that batch? You know, I, I guess from from all of the uh, you know at last count. Um, during my time at the studio, you know, I, I, I think I've designed maybe 50 ships and shuttles. Wow. Um, um, you know, and, and I think during the, uh, during the next generation period, I think, you know, my favorites might've been, uh, uh, the Vorcha, you know, the Klingon mm -hmm. attack cruiser, mm -hmm. uh, and the runabout, um, mm -hmm. And then later, you know, with Voyager, it was Voyager. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you can really see it, it does really show when there's kind of a consistent design philosophy through that. Um, and you really saw it, like you mentioned with the shuttles, the, there's a lineage there. There's, you know, size and and duration sort of lineage. And it's, that's always fascinating to me. Um, which kind of moved up to the runabout being just this long distance, long endurance sort of shuttle, which is a favorite design of mine. Well, one thing I one thing I always liked too, Rick, was when you designed those shuttles and like the other stuff you've done. There's a, you know, those of us who, when we were kids, bought the old Franz Joseph technical manual, and then later on the other ones. There was a logic to it. The different sizes mm -hmm. had different roles, and it was it was really nice, nice, nice to see that being being continued on. It made sense. Yeah. Well, you know, at, at, uh, during the during the the design process of the exteriors okay um uh you know we, we you know it wasn't just me sitting at mm -hmm. my drafting table okay it was working with the set designers working with the production designer um you know seeing what could be uh built practically 
Um, you know, and that involved like, you know, the construction guys in the mill and, and, you know, every, every part of the, uh, process, um, you know, was, was at the studio and, uh, you know, wasn't just me drawing spaceships. Mm -hmm. okay? Um, you, you know, you, you go from, uh, you go from a preliminary set of sketches to, uh, you know, a more final look. And then the set designers um, and the construction guys, you know, make it real. Okay. And yeah, there's some changes along mm -hmm. the way. Um, um, you know, some of the shuttlecraft. Okay. We had to make sure that people could get in and out of the thing without <laughs> stooping over uh, in, in a, in a sort of a clumsy manner. Mm -hmm. So, so there was a lot of practical uh, set work that went into these, and um, yeah, you know, I I I, I liked uh, doing my part with um, you know the Starfleet uh, the Starfleet style mm -hmm. of the time. Okay, and you know we've 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 seen that evolve over. The last, you know, how many decades? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you answered that because I was, I was kind of curious how how design the process goes from the imagination, like you're 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 conceptualizing the, uh, the to to a practical sort of de vehicle. Because I mean, I've, I've you can see in my background, I've got the discovery from 2001, and uh, I I. I I recall the story of that one was that the interior wouldn't fit in the would not fit in the actual exterior of the ship if it was built as a real you know vehicle, and it was because of the the need for the size of the sets and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, if, that happens. That that happens all the time. I mean, there's you know there were, were jokes uh, going around in Hollywood, uh, you know, years and years and years ago. Uh, uh, the interior of, let's say, a boat on the water, okay? Yeah. Looked huge, and then the boat itself, not so big. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and, and sometimes people notice, and sometimes they, uh, the, you know, they just go with it. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, uh, the actual uh, exterior styling, okay, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like... Uh, a little bit of aircraft design, a little bit of uh, car styling, um, you know, a little bit of, of uh, uh, space hardware uh, look to things. Um, and, you know, and it all kind of comes together um, working in concert with um, what the sets are looking like. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I you know, just as as a simple uh, a simple explanation, I would not do a you know a terribly angular, planar looking shuttle if the ship that it was connected with was beautifully curved and styled mm -hmm. and you know, aerodynamic looking. Um, you have to make the different objects work together. Yeah, it's a uniform design aesthetic in a way, or something like that. Yeah, and and this that you know that even worked its way into into the hand props and things. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, look at things like the um, uh, the phaser, the communicator, the the pad, the tricorder. You know, um, all of those borrowed lines and curves from things like the sets, mm -hmm. like. You know, on, on the uh, uh, the Enterprise D, you know, you look at uh, the bridge, you look at the quarters sets, uh, the engine, you know, the you know, main engineering. Um, a lot of that that styling language um, got worked into hand props and things, mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. and then you look at uh, a lot of the alien cultures that mm -hmm. we do different stylistic language okay klingon is not the same as starfleet not right. the same as romulan not the same as corrosion 
you know, not the same as Cardassian. Um, so each each of these stylistic schools, um, you know, had their own set of rules. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I, it, I think sorry, I think it definitely helped in terms of also for the for the audience watching because you know there was people there's a sci-fi geeks but there's also people that are just casual watching and being able to identify that stylistic um component definitely helped identify like yes this is a romulan ship you're on a romulan ship you're on a borg vessel and i think it i i, I think it's something that definitely uh star trek helped pioneer in terms of uh you know, that sort of thing with design. And we see that being carried over to other sci-fi fran franchises, even to this day. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, you, you need to. I think that that unifying look, and I was going to bring that up, that you'd know something is Klingon or Vulcan or something just by looking at it mm -hmm. in those series. And that's that's really, I think, a very important aspect of design. Uh, and And... You know, automotive companies and aircraft companies really take a lot of that seriously. That people need to be able to look at it and go, "Oh, that's a Porsche. That's, you know, that's a Chrysler. You know, that sort of thing." That and, and, it fits. You know, and, and a lot of times, a lot of times, it's not even you know, we we, we you know, we didn't try to bang people over the head mm -hmm. with the the stylistic cues. Okay, um, you know, if you look at something like the Hiroshima. Uh, look at the uh, Hunter Vessel, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I got some of my cues for the the Hunter ship from the Hiroshian set, okay, where there were specific shapes, okay, um, and colors. And I said, you know, I'm going to take these big triangular columns, I'm going to turn those into nacelles mm -hmm. on the ship. And so you, you you know you want to you want to remind the viewers, okay, you know e e even subtly, you know, uh, remind them, oh yeah yeah the shape was on the bridge, or you know you look at the Cardassian neck, mm -hmm. look at the neck on the character, okay, in the costuming and, and the makeup, okay, uh, that got worked into the station. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, very much so. And and that's what, you know, again, that's made it very easily. You could tell that it was, uh, you know, definitely uh, a unique thing for that for that civilization. We're actually recording this on Monday, the 17th. Um, uh -huh. have, have you been have you been keeping up with 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 Picard, Rick? Um, actually, no. OK, Not I'm just curious. I will uh, I will be catching up with uh, a lot of the recent shows um, in in a little bit. Okay, I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to give you spoilers. Then good, Not good, good. Worry. Don't talk about it because I won't talk Rick. about it. No, that's all right. I haven't watched any of these shows, and I want to. And oh. damn it, you guys are constantly <laughs> screwing with my head. I know. Well, you're gonna like I said, the last one's on this Thursday. By the time well, this airs, it'll be out. So all I right. thought. I thought where you were going with your comment about yeah. Monday and today being Monday and we're recording Monday was Rick's uh, real space side at the, the Artemis launch or the, uh, the uh, Starship one launch, not launch. Yeah. The so scrub I, launch. The yeah. scrub launch. Yeah. So we can go there too. Yeah, they have consistent, they have some consistent style too. I like, uh, like the modern s launchers and such, cause they're actually, you know, being reused and everything. It's, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. I like, I like it. So it reminds me of Starship uh, or Spaceship XM or whatever it was, that old Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> 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 That's kind of what I saw when I saw it. Wow. I was thinking, I was reading this uh, on, on Rick's entry that he, you're an acknowledged expert on Saturn V uh, patterns. And I'm thinking, well, you're going to have that next one. You'll have to be a, an acknowledged expert on the, Starship, uh, Starship One, and the uh, patterns, but it's pretty much all one pattern so far, anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I'm a big fan of of space hardware. You know, going back uh, to when I was a kid in the '50s. Uh, you know, so I started out uh, watching science fiction movies on a big black and white TV, and uh, yep. you know, growing up. And I love to tell people uh, I was around when there was nothing in orbit. 
nothing. Right. Okay. And so I got to see the entire space program from from its beginnings. Okay. And uh, you know, I got I got hooked. You know, as a kid, yeah, I I, uh, I loved watching um, some of the first uh, uh, manned flights. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I I hid out I hid out in the coat closet in junior high with a transistor radio, <laughs> and listened yes. listen to the Gemini um, missions um, mm-hmm. on on a transistor radio. Okay, yep. that's how that's how much of a fan I was. Well, I mean that that that, that eventually um, got me into um, uh, going from Connecticut, where I was living. Um, down to uh florida uh i got to see apollo 11 take off oh, wow. with a million other a million other tourists mm. okay but i got to see apollo 13 take off from the press site nice yeah and one thing i always remember hearing is that if you if you've never been down at kennedy for a saturn 5 launch it's not so much you see it you feel it oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, we we felt it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and uh, you know, I, I I I never got to see a shuttle launch, but I got to see a couple of landings at uh, Edwards. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, with with press passes, so mm-hmm. you know, it was uh, it was a a, a, a great. Uh, a great experience, um, you know, seeing a lot of the hardware and, you know, with things like the Saturn V, okay. Um, yeah, I got into, you know, studying the, uh, the shape, the, the systems, um, uh, and uh, then got it into my head to produce um, better decals mm-hmm. for the kits than mm-hmm. what was in the kits. Yep. Okay, and that that blossomed into like like uh, you know a pile of different decal sets, and uh, I I just love working uh, working the graphics. Well, let's let, let's actually talk yeah. about that about that a little bit. Um, you know, let's let's talk a little bit because yeah, like I know our one of our sponsors and our good friends at Cult TV Band, they carry quite a few of your of your graphics for your you know not only your uh, NASA stuff but. You know the Imperial Klingon decals and the new um, Intrepid class low observer, low low visibility, low observable decals. Um, mm-hmm. So how did that come 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 about? Deciding to do decals for let's have a little bit of a history there. Well, you know, I, I, I again going back to the fifties. You know, as mm-hmm. a kid building building model kits. Um, you know, I, I built, uh, you know, fire planes and tanks and automobiles and, you know, spaceships. Um, so it's it's never really been far away from me. All right. Um, when the Alps company brought out their um, uh, micro dry printers. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it it became instantly clear that those Printers could work on water slide decal paper mm-hmm. beautifully. Okay, um, you you had to you had to to perform a little magic to get the Alps to do the proper colors. Okay, um, and uh, there there were some tricks to making making the uh, the output look good, but if you were doing um, you, you know. Um, like red, like the red lettering on the side of the Saturn V. Okay, you know that wasn't too hard. Mm-hmm. Um, the blue for the American flag, uh, blue. Okay, that wasn't too hard. If you wanted to do like a, some middle tones, like gray or tan, uh, the printer wasn't that smart. The printer driver wasn't that smart in doing middle tones. Okay. okay. Um, but you know, I, I I got some experience playing with the Alps printer, and unfortunately, Alps discovered that there were so many hobbyists <laughs> who were getting into this machine and running thousands of pages. Yes, that they they threw up their hands and they said, "We quit." Mm. 
Okay, so they stopped making the printer. They stopped making the ribbons. <laughs> and uh, back around uh, 2015, um, you know, all production of the ribbons, like, just ceased. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and there are some companies that will make, you know, compatible ribbons, but uh, it's not what it was in, you know, like 2000, you know, 1999, 2000, thereabouts. Okay. Um, uh, I had a couple of machines that uh, eventually burned the heads out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they would, they would replace the machine for a refurbishment fee, that, that kind of thing. Mm. But, uh, you know, there were diminishing returns. I can see that. At least for me, you know, I, I just could not see myself, you know, buying more uh, fixer-upper machines. Mm -hmm. uh, which is when I, I, got, uh, I got hooked up with uh, Microscale. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, here in uh, California, and they have done a fabulous job uh, with their printing. And uh, the selection of colors, you know, I can work with the colors that they have. Um, and, uh, you know, they have a, f they have a few um, uh, specs for building shapes and lines, uh, but nothing I couldn't work with. And I've, oh, I've had a gorgeous. great time, you know, with their with their product. Right. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love the, you know, I know when I was talking to uh, Steve at Cult TV Band a while back, I remember last year when the Voyager ones got released and they were like selling out and someone did a great, you know, a great backstory on it. And what a great idea, you know, for that, for that sort of things as mm -hmm. well. Um, and I know that I know it's been very popular and I I'm sure you will see a couple of Voyagers on the table at Wonderfest this year. Well, I, I hope to. I don't think we've seen a Lovis no yet on the tables. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I hope we do the, <laughs> Maybe more than enough seen time, it. more than enough time to build one now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but yeah, just I, I know the real space stuff. Jeff's a big fan of real space. I think you have a Saturn V in your stash, don't you, Jeff? I do. And I don't don't think I haven't been thinking of. Looking I over, know, I'm just good, saying. Good we like to... to stop me from from jumping oh, wow. to look look the look at the decal sets for until after this show is over. But well, but... I know, and like in Horizon Models out of Australia, they've done some nice stuff. We've uh, had them on, and just real spaces is, is so popular. I've got the Hasegawa Voyager kit, the Voyager probe I want to build, and yeah, it's such a it's such a fascinating part of of the hobby, definitely. Uh, Terry, what's what's your next question? I, I think let's stay on the real space for a moment. Yeah. And if there's anything you'd like to talk about um, working with uh, JPL and then on Cosmos as well, because I know, you know, for me and for a lot of us, that Cosmos hit at just kind of the right time in our lives to yeah. really cement what we were already doing. Yeah. Um, and it was like, wasn't a shot out of the dark, but it was so foundational, I think. And um, everything from the visuals to the presentation, the full presentation of it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And well, I, some... you know, with with things like Cosmos, uh, okay, I f I first uh, met uh, uh, Carl and uh, his then wife Linda um, uh, uh, back in 1972. Okay, so I had known them for a while, um, mm -hmm. stayed in touch, um, um, and. Uh, uh, in in the mid mid to late seventies, um, uh, you know, he started writing um, uh, something called Man and the Cosmos, which mm -hmm. eventually got shortened just to Cosmos. Okay, um, I was still back in Connecticut in in uh, like mid seventy seven thereabouts, but uh, I got to visit um, uh, Adrian Malone, who would be the producer on the series. Okay, and he had an office in uh, Philadelphia and uh, came down and, uh, you know, got to, to talking about, you know, the, uh, the eventual um, beginning of work on the series. Uh, and uh, I mean, things that the 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 timeline threads were, were, were kind of crazy, but 
I ended up in California um, in late 77 on a two week trip, just visiting different studios, okay? Uh, uh, visiting uh, Disney, MGM, um, uh, Paramount, um, you know, seeing what was going on and okay, could there be some work? Okay. Um, the year before, okay, in 1976, the World Science Fiction Convention was in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And there was a display room full of stuff from this movie nobody had seen yet, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of it. I've heard of it. <laughs> and uh, there were costumes. There were, uh, 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 you know, there were, were photographs from uh, the production. Um, and all, all along the walls were uh, prints of Ralph McQuarrie's artwork. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and I just, I just wondered, you know, could I kind of maybe do this kind mm -hmm. of work? Mm -hmm. Which is which is what sparked the trip to uh, to L.A. Um, and uh, Disney was the only studio that offered me some work, and it it was on the Black Hole. Mm -hmm. okay. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long because <laughs> they decided that you know I, I was there for a couple of months, and they decided they had to go back and work on the script. Right. Mm. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, you know, I I kept looking around, but during the during the the uh, during the visit to the, the the different studios, I did visit Paramount, and I met with Joe Jennings, who mm -hmm. was the production designer on Phase Two, uh, and got to meet Mike Miner and John Cartwright and uh, some of the the set designers. Uh, and Joe was a straight shooter. He said, I don't have anything for you. But I left my samples. Okay. Well, I don't know, maybe four or five months later, I get a call from Joe. Mm -hmm. They're announcing Star Trek, the motion picture in the morning. Do you want to come in? Do you <laughs> want to come in? Come in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already at your front door. <laughs> so the next morning, okay, the next morning was the press conference down on stage. Mm -hmm. Introducing the cast members. And Mike Miner had, a, a, there was a huge print of one of Mike's paintings up, uh, up uh, against one wall of the Enterprise, uh, right. you know, against the earth. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful art. Terrific event. Um, and... Then after after the press conference, uh, I went upstairs to the art department, mm -hmm. and uh, for for you know a couple of days, uh, Mike Miner and I were looking you know to see okay, what do we need to get this thing started? Um, and uh, I, you know, and and the, the, the the work on the motion picture was was a real eye opener for me, and it, and it taught me how the studio system worked. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joe Jennings was was absolutely terrific, um, and uh, you know, I got to do paintings, I got to do sketches, I got to do a, a ton of, of uh, control panel graphics. Um, with Lee Cole and Lee was was like she established the style. Okay, uh, during phase two. Okay, um, so <laughs> we were using pen and ink and rub on lettering and photo photo typeset text. Yep, and all of the old school mm -hmm. techniques for mm -hmm. making black and white graphics. Right. Okay? Um. And, uh, you know, during during the time on the motion picture, Joe Jennings left to work on Shogun. Oh, yeah. Okay. Big thumbs up. <laughs> him. You know, good luck to him on that. And Harold Michelson came in as production designer, and he was an absolutely astounding teacher. 
He had worked for Hitchcock. He had done oh, wow. uh, storyboards and illustrations. And, uh, um, you know, he taught me how to project from a plan view and elevation views up into it, making a perspective drawing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this only built on the things that my dad taught me. He was an architect mm. back in Connecticut. Right. Okay. So, you know, my dad put a pencil in my hand when I was like two and a half years old. Right. So I learned things about blueprints, but Harold taught me how to project up into a perspective. And he said that the, the, the greatest thing about doing these projections was that you could back project, all right? Mm -hmm. if, the, if the director of photography said, I want a window over here on this wall, okay, you could put that into the scene and then back project it to where it needed to be in the blueprints. Mm -hmm. And my head just went poof. <laughs> this is amazing. This is this is fantastic. I got to do, you know, a little bit of projection, um, you know, and, and some uh, concept, uh, you know, uh, illustration work on things like the engine room, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and a lot, a lot of control panel graphics, um, stuff for the uh, spacesuit, the suit up room. Um, and stuff for the the travel pods, stuff for the the uh, the bridge, um, for main engineering. I mean, the, there were graphics that had to go everywhere. Um, <laughs> I, I did Chekhov's uh, weapon station. Oh yeah, okay, wow. Um, and uh, some of the stuff for uh, for sick bay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some of the sick bay graphics um, ended up being used in the early days of next gen mm -hmm. and you know just just crazy stuff <laughs> well it's, it's amazing yeah. when you think how far some of these these designs are still going like when you look at certain certain things and you see it in some of the you know still i'm i'm thinking of the uh of the red alert you know the one that flashes of that and you're still seeing that in some of the tv series oh, sure, sure. you know stuff it, like it, that it sounds it's i mean it, i could be wrong here but it certainly sounds right that your career has been a series of um uh, serendipitous moments combined with a lot of hard work <laughs> i mean it, 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 seeing star wars getting an interest in maybe doing that kind of work going to la and falling into this world, uh, it sounds it sounds amazing. Well, a, a lot of it was luck. A lot of it was me making cold calls. Yeah, uh, you don't hear about too much of that these days. No, at least I, I don't. Um, but I I was also very very fortunate to hook up with people who were old school, mm. who were generous with their time. Right um and their and their knowledge okay uh and and this is this is in both the you know the the film and tv area as well as real space um you know i have known so many engineers and scientists and astronomers who were old school mm -hmm. if if you had a question they would make the time to to answer um, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you one quick story that that connects a lot of this up. Uh, Paul Calais was an artist who did some wonderful paintings and drawings for NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, his son, Chris, I know his son. Um, uh, uh, Chris is following in his dad's footsteps and doing a lot of, of uh, uh, space flight related art as well. But I got to meet Paul Calais when I was like 18 because he lived in Stamford, Connecticut, where I lived. Okay. He lived about six blocks away from me. <laughs> and I cold called him and I, I, I sort I introduced myself. I said, I was interested in art and space and could I maybe meet and you know, you know, talk about about art. Um, 
And he invited me and my dad out to his studio a couple of towns away. And I got to see, you know, his paintings for NASA, the, 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 the big painting he did of Neil Armstrong taking the first step on the moon. Wow. I got to cool. see this painting with my own eyes right wow. in front of me. Uh, and Kelly did beautiful pencil work. He has a book out called The Pencil. Okay. Uh, and it's worth getting a copy of that just to look at the composition and the strokes. And, you know, he's done, he's done paintings of Native American subjects. Uh, uh, you know, he, he just did beautiful, beautiful color and black and white art. And we're, we're walking around his studio and he suddenly stops and he says, you realize why I'm doing this, don't you? And I, I kind of like stood back and shook a little. And he said, because you're going to have to do it too. Hmm. <laughs> Good point. I love it. And Good point. It, it, you know, and, and it was true. It was true. So, I, you know, I, I have talked to up and coming artists. Um, I've talked to, uh, you know, kids interested in the space program. Um, and I will give of my time and, and talk about what I know because Paul Calais made me do it. Mm. <laughs> I think that's great. That is absolutely yeah. great. And it's, it's not just, it's not just in the space arena. Um, it's also in film and television. Mm -hmm. no. Very much so. We, 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 we can't let you say, you know, you, you, you did a lot of cold calling. We can't let that go by without probably one of the most ultimate and career changing cold calls that you did. Um, and that's, of course, when uh, you were driving and you heard that Roddenby said they were going to bring back a Star Trek onto TV, uh, yeah, you know, going to yeah. be called the next gen. And apparently, uh, I don't know if you pulled over on the freeway or what, but you basically you, you basically <laughs> called Gene Roddenberry's office and said, hi. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Well, you, you, you got you got that like 90 percent. Right. Uh, right. Well, that's good. <laughs> I, was, I was living in Orange County and right. the commute was like uh, maybe, you know, an hour uh, going back home. But I, I, you know, I had the radio on in the car and, uh, uh, you know, they announced Paramount said that they were doing Star Trek The Next Generation. And, you know, within a few seconds, I pulled off to a gas station to a pay phone. Yep, back then, yep. <laughs> and okay. I, I, I talked with Susan Sackett in, uh, you know, in Jean's office. And um, she said, don't worry, don't worry. The phone's been ringing off the hook. He'll want to talk to you. you know, just, just, just wait a little bit. Okay? Awesome. Um, you know, and, and eventually, yeah, a, n a number of us, uh, you know, came into, uh, came into the office, uh, talked to Gene, talked to, uh, uh, Bob Justman. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I left, uh, you know, some more samples of, uh, of work and they, they knew that, you know, they, they knew that I was on, on the motion picture. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, it was a, it was a process of, you know, getting next gen started. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Andy Probert and I looked uh, back in the old art department, mm -hmm. which was vacant at the time. Right. And we just moved in and took over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which, which I think, you know, both hiring you and, and uh, Andy were two excellent choices because you also look at Andy's CV with the work he did with Galactica and a few things. And again, it's just, you know, it was just the perfect team at the perfect time. Yeah, it worked, you know, it worked out uh, terrific. Uh, you know, we, we got settled in, uh, we, you know, uh, we each had our, our sort of specialty um, uh, styles and, uh, you know, interests in things like the ships and the prop hardware and, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was plenty of, you know, there was plenty of work to go around. So, uh, you know, we, we tore into it. Yep, exactly. Just, you know, stunning, stunning work. And again, uh, I think we're, we're so much, we're so much the better of it. Um, Terry, back to you. Yeah, I think, um, 
before we wrap up with you, we'll um, talk about Wonderfest that's coming up here, yes. regular. So, um, besides Iron Modeler judging, what keeps you coming back to Wonderfest? <laughs> it's you know, it's just people. You know, it, it's yeah. it's all of the you know all of my 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 pals who are into building models, designing new you know designing new things. Uh, especially with all of the 3d printing going on mm-hmm. oh, for goodness sake. um and uh, uh you know the airbrushing and the figure painting and resin kits and you know it's like wow this is this is it's an oasis mm-hmm. you know <laughs> it's a place to go and 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 meet with you know friends that i've made over the years and yeah. just you know, have a great time. It's it is it's a it's a whole community, and it's to me it's as much reunion as it is anything else. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather go to this reunion than a family reunion. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing our wives don't don't listen to the podcast or, oh, or our family or our family. <laughs> I'm I'm um, far more social than she is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I, I also, we can't let you go without also mentioning, uh, you know, the International Association of Astronomical Artists. Um, we've all been big fans of this forever with some of the, uh, you know, and you helping get that started. And just, again, the amazing artwork, as you say, what the artists can do these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the IAAA, um, you know, it, it really... It, to me, it grew out of uh, the work that a number of us did on Cosmos. Okay, right. Um, and after Cosmos, uh, you had the formation of the Planetary Society. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. You know, which, which is still around today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, a number of us who went to. Uh, the Planet Fest in 1981. Okay, um, you know, Cosmos was was sort of you know like 1977, eight, right. nine, in eighty. Okay, in eighty one, the Planetary Society put on Planet Fest in Pasadena, um, and a number of us went there and uh, you know uh, displayed our art and. Uh, some of us had never met before. Um, artists that I only knew by name, um, I finally now met and have been friends with ever since. Hmm. Um, and uh, within uh, a couple of years, we officially formed the IAAA. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we promote um, uh, the science, the the wonder of the cosmos, um, you know, in various artistic forms, uh, you know, painting, drawing, um, you, you know, we're into model building mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, you, you know, CG and, uh, you know, it, we, whatever technique it takes to make a wonderful piece of art that shows off um you know, objects in the solar system, in the galaxy, in the universe. Um, you know, that's uh, that's what we're about. And we, you know, we we go on uh, uh, workshops in various uh, uh, places that uh, uh, that have like u- unique geology. Okay, um, you know, uh, some of the gang have gone to uh, Iceland. Um, they've gone to. Um, you know, we've we've gone to Death Valley now like three or four times, mm-hmm. um, and uh, um, you know we 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 ad- adapt what we see to other worlds. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, you know a number of us have uh, you know we have uh, done illustrations for science magazines. Um, you know we've produced. Uh, um, you know, prints and sold originals, and uh, you know it's um, you know the, the 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 wonders of what's out there. You know, keep us uh, keep us going. Right. Fantastic. That's uh, that's a, that's a, <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, 
I can't think of too much that's uh, that's more important than to remind people about the wonders of not just I mean our planet, but the wonders of the universe, the wonders of everything that's out there, and get our heads out of our butts every now and again, and exactly and, here, here, and take, you know, and take a look at what's really out there, and sort of go, wow, wow, we're so small, we're we so are. small. <laughs> well, I still remember Carl's, you know, pale blue dot. So oh. Much. You know, it's just, yeah. well, yeah. that was uh, that was just inducted into yeah. the um, mm -hmm. uh, the the Library of Congress. Yeah. 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 Rightly. Mm -hmm. So. So we always ask the following uh, two questions um, to all of our guests. And again, just just to keep a consistency. Um, can you take a guess that and you mentioned briefly 3D printing, but can you take a guess of where the model kit building hobby might be in five to ten years? Five to ten years, uh, I'm sure we will still have injection kits uh, and and resin kits. Um, uh, there may be more 3D printing out there. You know, people selling files so you can do it at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I I just find that the the I find the 3D printing. Uh, phenomenon uh, to be just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, my first, yeah. first, um, my first uh, exposure to to three D printing, at least you know professionally, was uh, some of the work that I did, uh, some model work I did for the Griffith Observatory back in two thousand six. Okay, so that's a few years ago. Mm -hmm. A few. Uh, but uh, I had a local company uh, do some planetary model work for me mm -hmm. um and uh, just to be able to hold a master art that came out of one of their printers you know mm -hmm. it's like oh my god i'm holding i'm holding a piece of mars where the data came from 35 million miles away wow yep yep <laughs> that's pretty amazing okay yep. uh, and you know in in some of my some of my little uh, um uh, scratch build models. I've I've had I've had you know 3D companies make some parts for me because I was not going to try to uh, you know uh, fabricate them on my you know on my work table. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't have the tools. Uh, but now that people can go out and get you know UV resin printers and washing stations and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I can't wait to see where it goes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah it is. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so what's currently, you mentioned your workbench. What's currently on your bench? Um, my workbench is my computer. Okay. So is there anything you can tell us about what you're working on? Um, okay. Well, you know, you mentioned the, uh, you mentioned the uh, Imperial Warship and uh, Intrepid uh, decals. Yes. Okay. Those were parts one and two of uh, of a story. I read that story. That was absolutely amazing, by the way. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's 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 me having fun. Uh, you're having a lot of fun, and I'm waiting for part three. By the way, it's, well, uh, part three I am writing right awesome, now. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and something crazy is going to happen. <laughs> I love uh, it. I love uh, it. Carolyn Hagee, who is the uh, the main character from. Uh, the office of uh, Starfleet intelligence. Yes. yes. Carolyn's going to go through some crazy stuff. Excellent. No, <laughs> I I really enjoyed that story. I was going to ask you if you'd written that night. I was pretty sure you had, and it was just, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good story and it's a nice little bonus. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just fun. It's just yeah, fun. Exactly. Uh, a little bit, little bit of attack, a little bit of, uh, you know, spy intrigue and, uh, uh we'll uh we'll we'll see it wonderfest stay tuned there okay so is is that what we're is that when it's going to be we have an exclusive you're hoping to have it for wonderfest <laughs> i'm i'm hoping to have okay. uh, i'm hoping to have the set uh done by by then all right i won't obviously we won't hold you to it but it'd be a nice surprise i'm sure because i know i know terry's going to be there and I'm a few of us to. a few of us a few of the canadian contingent uh for jeff and i it's on our bucket list we are going to make it down there one day Definitely. Just, yeah, yeah. 
Alrighty. Well, thank you again, uh, Rick. It's been an absolute honor. We'd love to have you back again at some point. Um, just, yeah, you know, stay safe. Keep on producing. As, as I said, I, if I say any more, I'm going to sound like a fanboy. <laughs> no, no, no. You, that's too just late. a sales story. Too that's late. That's just a sales. Okay yeah. That, yeah. Sure. yeah. No, I am. I am the classic engineer. So, all right. Thank you again for joining us, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, we'll see you guys. All right. Take care. Now, see, wasn't that fun? Didn't I tell you guys would be blown away? I total fanboy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough that you have to keep drawing stuff out of Rick, isn't it? I mean, come on. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so hard. He's like a rock. He's like a stone. Yeah. <laughs> but fantastic guest. He gave us yeah, a, nice he really little, is. a nice little possibility. We'll see that third decal sheet for the low vis voyager at wonderfest so yeah yeah good. i'm gonna have to pop over to cult tv man and take a look at those saturn 5 decal sets uh, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> one of us one yes. of us <laughs> one of us all right um what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna uh before we go to what's on the bench we're also gonna talk to another good friend at sean's custom model tools now we're going to talk a bit about Sean's Custom Model Tools, one of our other sponsors of the Scale Model Podcast. Some very cool things, both 3D printed and the Goodman Super Sanding Blocks. Let's start with the Microset and Microsole Decal Set Bottle Stand. This is uh, purposely designed for the Microscale Set and Sole. Uh, most modelers over the years, they've tipped these bottles over. So uh, this is a very handy thing. At fourteen ninety five, you can uh, put them both together. They're printed in blue and red for easy identification. Comes with a black base, and they actually have little magnets on it, so it helps keeps them in place. Definitely a good deal. I use mine all the time, and I can well recommend them. Let's talk a bit about those Goodman Model Super Sanding Blocks, namely the Value Pack Combo for $28.99. You get the 80 grit, 180 grit, 220, 320, 400, and 600. Uh, just an amazing set. Uh, just what you need. And you can also, uh, if you want, you can also get a, a sanding, super sanding block stand for it, which also uh, really makes life a little bit easier. Helps helps things keep it organized. The other thing too is they have they have the awesome model tape dispenser for uh, your various tapes it's basically a 3d printed thing you put spools of your tapes it's got a little razor blade to help uh, cut it and it's a uh, really really good design uh, so yeah works out really well and yours for 1995 so check out these and other amazing deals at sean's custom model tools.com and uh, also on facebook and tell them that the scale model podcast sent you Okay, what's on the bench? Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, I did a little bit of work on the um, on the Babs and on the dropship. Um, I had to do a little correction work on the Babs, uh, so I'll get that finished up and keep moving on her. Uh, <laughs> I did cut some uh, hexagon masks out of Tamiya tape. Um, don't use the washi tape setting on your silhouette for that. It went right through it. And, really, uh, it was a real pain getting it off the backing paper. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know um, you mentioned the correct settings. Yes, four and four. Um, and it was able to cut you know, the four, three, and two millimeter hexes. So very cool. Nice. I noticed um, you sent us an email uh, about some being on about some silhouettes being on sale. By the time I looked, they were all sold out. Ah, uh, were they? Yeah, yeah that's okay. Keep an though. eye on Woots. I have no money. I have no money for that. Up. Yeah. So definitely. Now, if you need something cut, let me know. Yeah, sure thing. All right. Um, and, oh, you also got something else. you got to send us pictures of this, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The HK Models 48 scale B25. Um, I, I kind of ordered on a whim. And it it's a, every bit as nice as it, you think it would be. All right. Shots or shots or it doesn't yeah, exist. I've got to saying. do that. I, I, yeah, I keep forgetting to send pictures around. That's all right. I'll forgive you this time. This time. All right. Uh, so I've been not much been plugging away on the bow fighter. I got the AK Gen 3 uh, sky on the underside. I did, had to do two coats. I haven't sprayed AK in about six months, I realized, on such a large surface. So, you know, like I've said before, beautiful paints, but it's like any time you have a new product, you have to uh, you have to get used to it again and you forget. 
So uh, a little bit of fine tuning to get it on. It goes on like a lot of AK stuff. It goes on light. You build it up. It's very subtle. So if you want to, if you actually wanted to do a weather paint effect, you could you you could easily do it from one coat and you'd be fine because mm-hmm. um, you would get that kind of modeling. Um, I did do two coats in total. Um, worked out really, really good. And then I was about to start masking to do the upper, the upper side. And then I realized, uh, I must have knocked it on the, uh, port wing at one point. Cause there's now a very nasty, you know, the glues come apart. The wings come apart at the front end. Um, so yeah, I must have done something, but not a big deal. I've been having fun with this, taking my time. I'm still hoping to get it done. It's part of, uh, it's part of the group beer build, uh, for um oh see don't you hate getting old um <laughs> no. model air model airplane maker thank you um i'm hoping to get it done for me for his pacific group build but yep gonna go back fill it in a little bit a little bit of sanding i am then going to uh going to uh paint just a little bit more and then i'll start some some masking for the other stuff so that's what i've been doing mr jeff nothing Nothing. 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 I figure I get a buy because I killed myself this spring. Yeah. Uh, working on those two planes for the museum, and, and then yeah, then finishing the B forty seven for for Heritage Con. Which and one first? We should mention congratulate you for that. Thank you. You, were, you was... weren't here in the last podcast, and you know we had some positive things. That was an awesome job you did. I still well, say I Terry that. got robbed, but you know that's another story. I didn't think Terry got robbed. I know. I t- I told him no, that last I, I week. Didn't. I know. He he continues to say that. But... I accept the wisdom of the judges. All right. Well, well, still. so do I. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you've been you you've been you've been doing more demolishing than building in real life, right? Yeah. It's about you keep telling people that we live on the shores of Lake Erie, and we literally do. We have seven acres right on the lake, and the problem with Lake Erie is that it is. Um, it's shallow, but it's a hundred feet from the top from our from our property down to the water. Uh, it's a big cliff, and it's made out of clay and sand, like a layer cake. And every spring we lose a little bit. Uh, on average, I think over over history, it's supposed to be like uh, a meter a year. You're supposed to to lose them. We haven't lost a lot for a long time, and this year we lost about forty feet. So 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 it's so it's six point nine acres now. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure our, if you if you actually mapped it out, half of our property is in the lake. We have to but, we, we we have to get some you know concrete barricades or something. Not you could build to. a fort. You could build a fort. Yeah, but we can't. No, because that'll just fall in. I know that'll fall in too. <laughs> All right. We so can't yeah, even put Canadians down. But uh, but no, I mean, uh, basically, when we had a last year, two years ago, we had 40 feet clearance from the edge of the cliff to. Uh, a screened in cabin that we built so we can go down and just sit and enjoy the lake. And uh, this year we have three feet. And, so, have, and now you have true waterfront p- property until you tore down we, the cabin. We, we quite definitely do. And so uh, the idea was, well, we knew we were going to move it. Some have to move it someday. So let's just take it apart. And we put it all there together with screws and bolts and we take it apart with screws and bolts. Now I hope you numbered the pieces. No, no, it's, uh, I made it by uh, sort of, uh, <laughs> uh, guessing and just sort of skidding, the ultimate you know, the ultimate one to one one the ultimate one to one model kit i'm just saying uh, that's pretty much what it is i don't yeah. even need to, now now home. now you did right. mention here in your show notes you did do it a little tiny bit of work on the concords i did i have two so concords it sounds like a, a comedy show you know flight of the concords but yeah. so i've got these two guys i'm so just Wow. They are. I know and they're so big in that scale, you know, but, and yeah. that's like one to one. Four, four. There you we'll go. Do you can do top gun. gun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're getting there. They're one forty four. Um, they're old airfix molds, like mid-fix. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, they're not great, but whatever. They're they're small enough at one forty four. I can just use. Don't need panel lines in that scale. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. No, they'll they'll look nice when they're done. Okay, so things we've seen. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, I just had the one. Uh, Tom Cleaver finished up the uh, Volte P66. Oh, that does look uh, nice. Yeah, from um, Dora Wings. Yep. That's over on Modeling Madness and link there. That um, does look nice. I, I wasn't going to buy that, but now I might buy that. <laughs> now, I, I'm looking at this. Yeah, I'm looking at this, and it's like you you wonder if the same some of the same people who did this or design the Corsair. 
Uh, it's just some similarity. Fox. I know. I know. I'm um, just, you, you look at that side view and you, you see some, you know, the tail and I don't know, just some. It definitely has some of that similarity yeah. to it. Yeah. It's smaller for for yeah, sure. Big time. Yeah. Um, it's just interesting when I first looked at it. It's a but beautiful... yeah, some of the plan form is pretty similar. Yeah. Beautiful. Kit yeah, I mean, if you, if you bent the wings, yeah, you'd have a baby Corsair. Yeah. Yeah. No, That's pretty cool. have to look into that. Yeah, this is great. No, the, you know what? He did a fabulous job. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. nice. Yep. I like this. When working on a, this is from the article, when working on a door wings kit, one must always remember that they will get a Tamiya Edward result if they treat the kit as a high end limited run project. Test fit everything four times before gluing once. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. And that <laughs> engine looks gorgeous. Yeah. yeah it's such a nice shot. Yeah. Very nice. Tom did a yeah. great job as always. Yeah, I, I love uh, love Dora's subjects. They are really oh, leaning know. into these. Yeah, I really, know. very much underserved projects. Again, I think it's. I think they must listen to the podcast. Yeah, I was <laughs> for some reason. I, I was thinking this was the vengeance. I'm like, I've already built one, and um, <laughs> and, and John John Lester says, "No, you haven't." It's like, yeah, I already built one. It's like, and looking, it's like, oh no, I didn't build this. That was a different plane. I love <laughs> it's it. another I Volte. Love it. I love it. That's good. That's good. All right. Anything else under things we've seen this week? I think we're. I haven't seen anything other than like tearing yeah. down a cabin. Um, I've you seen know, a lot of Volterran. Let's put it that yeah. way. Volterran and ibuprofen. Yeah, the, your are are good friends. I can't have ibuprofen anymore. I'm a Tylenol guy now. Some of oh, a heart no. attack. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is with that. I don't know. And then, uh, well, and, and and then we're going to get our walking in, Jeff and I, on Wednesday, our IPMS London club meeting. It's the annual swap, swap night, or as we call it, around the tables. There's already been yeah. some, deals, some deals flowing, so that'll be good. If I can, as usual, I hope to get rid of more than I add. Uh, yeah, that's thanks. not going to I know. Well, it's all that Blappy's fault again, right? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got, I got two from him, you know, so I'm surprised you're not trying to tempt me with stuff. I got four from him. I know. See, see, see. You're a monster. Dave's doing he always has right. weird stuff. He always has weird stuff. I know he his... does. He does. He knows exactly what 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 you like, so we can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just finish off. We'll talk about our good friends at Return to Kit Form. Uh, they're having some good sales now uh, of some Macross kits. They were kind of returning to the roots. They're getting back into kind of mass only for now but so definitely check out the deals at their website return the number two kitform.com if you're building valkyries and stuff like that from macross you need a canopy mask from them it's just a must you know i yep. don't want to talk to you if you don't have one i'm just saying they do a, <laughs> they do a great job so definitely You'll check talk to them but you don't want to hear their complaints let's leave it at that there you go i like that only good <laughs> things if you can't say something nice yep exactly exactly all right and as always uh, for more modeling podcast goodness from our friends at the other podcasts, check out them out at modelpodcast.com. Uh, you go there and it has lots of good links. Um, and for Kentucky, uh, Mike, who's probably listening to this, yes, I will be adding links to other friends of the uh, site, like YouTube channels and stuff like that. I didn't promise him that at the show. So, you know, he's going to start bugging me soon. So there you go. Mm, As always... So. Always check us out on Facebook, on the YouTubes, and our very own website where you can see stunning pictures from from Jeff and stunning pictures from Terry when he sends them, and the odd one from me. Um, <laughs> ScaleModelPodcast.com with our the world's best of the podcast show notes. We've been told that by reviewers. Our excellent show notes. I'm just well, they're outstanding. They're outstanding. They are. Everybody else sucks. I know. I that know. Attention well, to detail. We've we we we've had reviewers say that. You know, you know, so that's 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 always good. All right. So for episode 115, my name is Stuart Clark. My name's Jeff Hyland. And I'm Terry Terry Measley reminding you that it's a whole cosmos of designs out there. I love oh, that. That good? so good. It's it's so <laughs> good. Well done. Thank you. That and one almost hurt. <laughs> thank you and be well. <laughs>